Hello, we're live. Hello, let me know if you can all hear me. What a busy week it has been in the world of Stoke City. That revolving door at Clayton Wood is certainly spinning round and round and round as we uh, ha have had to say goodbye to a couple of players in the last week as well as welcoming, welcoming a couple of players too. Uh, let me know if you can hear me. I think I've got everything working. Um, so, yeah, we've got a busy, busy, busy show today. Um, we're going to start off by talking about Mario Vrancic, who was announced as Stoke's um, third signing of the summer. Um, and I forgot to mention about Jack Bonham as well. So, uh, well, uh, I knew I'd forgotten something. Right, so we're going to. The running order is uh, Mario Vancic joining, Jack Bonham joining. Um, then we're going to go through some of the departures. So we're going to go through Bauer, Mikel, and Efobe. We're going to talk a little bit about the away kit that was unveiled last week before talking about the friendlies that were also announced last week and then the Euro talk. There's a, I don't know if anyone's heard, but there's quite a big game involving England on uh, Wednesday, but we'll get to that a little bit later on. Let's have a look at who's in the chat. Welsh Monkey is in here once again. Um, Tom's in here again. That takes us nicely on to Mario Vrancic, who was announced as Stoke's third summer signing. A signing I'm really, really excited about. I would have absolutely loved it if he was maybe a year or two on, uh, younger. But I can't complain. He's, he's a, um, a very, very, very dangerous free kick taker, which is something we've needed for an absolute age. I mean, when was the last time we had a proper set-piece taker that could score from close range? I'd probably say the last one was Shakiri. Um And then, obviously, he's got an absolute rocket of, um, of a long shot as well. Something, again, we saw um, a couple of seasons ago how dangerous Klukas was um, from those sort of ranges. So it's good that maybe if Klukas does move on, we've still got that threat from long um, range efforts. Um, he's 32 years old, signed on a one year deal. From what I've heard, he was absolutely loved at Norwich um, and hopefully he can get similar status to what he did at Carrow Road uh, here. Um and uh, yeah, apparently he's quite a good player. Um, from videos I've seen of him too, he's a really, really tidy passer. Um, so yeah, let me know your thoughts on the signing of Mario Vrancic. Um, hopefully he gets the number eight. Um, yeah, little things like that. But uh, yeah, he's, he, I think he's going to be a pretty good play for us as well. He's uh, from Bosnia. Um, from what I saw in his first word, he... He, he sounds like he's the real deal um, coming to Stoke this summer. So, yeah, like I just said, leave your thoughts in the chat of Mario Vrancic. Definitely a player I'm really looking forward to seeing next season. Hello to Paul and Alex. How are you? Matt's just quickly asking if it's coming home. Well, we'll get into that a little bit later on. Tom's thoughts on Vrancic. Great sign. We'll do well with Powell and a player who can run like McCann. Fingers crossed. Yes, Alistair McCann is a name that's been linked with Stoke in the last week or two. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. If he comes through the door, uh, yes, Alfie Doughty is now ready to go. He was on the grass training for pre-season the other week. That was nearly two weeks ago that players have come back from pre for pre-season. Um, so, yeah, Vrancic, very excited by the signing. Um, just seeing a question here on Tyrese. It's looking to be end of August that Tyrese is back. So I don't think he's going to make the, fir the first couple of games of the season, but we can have him. I don't want him rushed back for the start of the season. I'd rather him come back maybe a month or two in the se into the season, but actually come back and be fully fit firing and hopefully project us further up that league table. James is in the chat. 
Very good signing, but I worry for Jordan Thompson. The lad deserves a starting place, but we but we keep bringing in new lads. I think we now have to target a left back and most importantly a number nine. Completely agree there. I, I do feel like one of um, Thompson or um, Thompson or Sorensen are probably going to miss out, um, especially if we keep Allen and or Klukas. Uh, obviously, Mikel's gone, which we'll get onto a little bit later on. But um, yeah, that's an interesting one, the Mario Francis signing, but very, very exciting nonetheless. Speaking of midfielders, John Obi Mikel, out of nowhere, really departed. I don't think anyone saw that one coming, really. I mean, I person, this is just my opinion. I don't, I didn't, wasn't Mikel's biggest fan uh, last season. I thought he wasn't really what we needed. He was quite old. He was good at the start of the season, but once he got that injury uh, at Sheffield Wednesday away, he never really, he, he wasn't really the same player afterwards. And I think maybe someone like Avrancic with Klukas or, you know, McCann has been linked. There's a whole host of names circulating for that midfield spot. But, um, yeah, Mikel is. He, I think he's gone to Kuwait City or something like that. I'm, I've completely forgotten what team he's gone to. But yeah, Johnny B. Mikel. I think. I, I think I can speak for everyone when we were really excited that that he was coming in, and then then sort of just out of nowhere he just sort of just fell off a bit, which was a shame because I think he, I think he really had the 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 potential to do well, but um, obviously that never came, which was a shame. Uh, Tom Worthy, this is his starting eleven for next season. Bursic, new right back slash Smith, Wilmot, Suter, Fox, and then a midfield of Rancic, uh, McCann, Powell, Wingers, Tyrese, and Doty, and then. Uh, Dion Charles up front. That's what he wants. I haven't quite decided who I want my starting eleven to be for the start of the season, but we'll get onto that uh, in a couple of weeks uh, once we get into the nitty gritty. I mean, it's only a month away now. The big kickoff against Reading. Um, but the next out the door was Moritz Bauer, who signed for FC Ufa, um, an Austrian club or a Russian club. Uh, again, I can't remember where they're from. Um, but yeah, Moritz Bauer, I really liked Moritz Bauer when he first came. I thought he was a good player. We never actually played him at right back, but that's that's by the by. Um, never really got the chance in the championship. Um, but under Rowett, Jones, O'Neill, um, the last memory I've got of um, Moritz Bauer was him scoring that hat-trick in the under-23s game a couple of months ago. Um, and that's pretty much all we've seen from Moritz Bauer these past couple of years. Um, I think if we'd have stayed up, I think he would have been a good player in the Premier League, but he wasn't. And uh, obviously, he is out the door on a permanent basis. Um, this is Ben. Ben is in here. Personally, would give him a go if his attitude was correct. This is on Bauer. There was rumours circulating about attitude problems, potentially. Um, but yeah, the only right-back we've got in the building now, the only senior right-back, is Tommy Smith. Um, and then we've got maybe Kieran Coates as the under-23, the starting left-back from the under-20, uh, right-back, sorry, from the under-23. So we need to get a left right-back in sooner rather than later. But um, let's move on to Benick Afobi, who's gone to Millwall on loan. Not too sure what to make of this one. I'm all up for players, you know, shifting, getting off the wage bar, uh, the wage bill, um, but not to championship rivals. You know, we, we loaned him to Bristol City a couple of years ago. Yeah, I, 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 I don't like us loaning players to direct championship rivals and you know Millwall were a side we were sort of tussling with for a little bit last season so um yeah I'm not happy that Afobe is 
still in the championship. However, he's off the wage bill, which is, if we're just focusing on Stoke being selfish Stoke fans, yes, he's off the wage bill for the year. Uh, I think his contract runs out at the end of the season. I don't know. I think his contract's out at the end of this or next season. I think it's this season um, that most of the Rowett signings are out of contract. So, yeah, like I just said, Millwall, yeah, crack on, panic, um, reunite with Rowett, go for it. Nice one. That's it. That's all I've got to say on Bannock if I uh, And then the final bit of transfer news is Jack Bonham, who also joins. I don't think he'll be a starting goalkeeper next season. I think um, he'll sort of be filling the Adam Davies role. Something tells me that Adam Davies is going to go this summer. Uh, I just got that horrible inside feeling. But realistically, if we look at the goalkeeper department now, you know, Jack Bonham's 27, he's just come from Gillingham. So he's probably going to be number two. And then you've got the number one, which hopefully will be Bursey. And then obviously we've got Blondie that potentially could be going out on loan. The he, So Jack Bonham's still going to want wages, uh, still going to want game time, sorry. But I don't think Adam Davies will want to be sat there as a number two. So it's, it's all swings and roundabouts in the goalkeeper department. Yeah, Jack Bonham though, decent signing, good cover if we if called upon because as we saw last season, all it takes is for someone to get a couple of in, a couple of goalkeepers to get a couple of injuries, and suddenly before you know it, you you're in the free agents market looking for players like Nicky Miemper and Andy Lonergan. Um, here we go, Ben's giving his verdict on the goalkeeper situation. Blondie loaned out, Davies will stay, and Bonham uh, experienced number three. And obviously, I assume you'll want Bursic as number one. Um, I think that's pretty much the opinion on all Stoke fans this summer, that uh, Joe Bursic should be the number one. Um, Tom Worthy, just going back onto the midfielders debate, the sooner Esabo and Bazu leave, the better. I think Esabo had was a really good player. It was just a shame how that sort of ended because I think under Nathan Jones, he had the potential to be an amazing player. He just didn't really do anything with it, which is a crying shame. Um, so final bits on transfer news. Will saying Bursic 1, Davis 2, Bonham 3. I'd be happy with that. You've got really good cover there across the board. You know, if, for example, especially in this modern time, Bursic was to test positive for, for COVID. Um, Adam Davies was injured for whatever reason. You know, we've still got a decent number three there. That was just a hypothetical situation. You know, anything can happen, especially in the championship. Um, so, next up, the away kit. The away kit. I'm going to be honest, I don't like it. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I think it's just green. I don't like green, um, especially that shade of green. The black trims as well. No, I, I, it really isn't for me. Um, that was really uh, unveiled last Monday. Um, yeah, I don't like it. The disappointing thing was it was sort of hyped up to be um, Black and green, obviously, which is what we got. But I think everyone expected the the solid black and green stripes like the uh, retro kit uh, from the 90s. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. Let me know your thoughts on the kit. Um, it was such a shame because I was so looking forward to having another black and green kit. Um, I think just something simple as inverting it, I think, would have been more up my street. You know, having the solid black kit with the with the green trims. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Um, I'm not Macron, so yeah. Nathan on the mission says he's loving the new away kit. Yeah, I, I wasn't a fan of it. I'm going to be honest. It's, I, I, there's only been a couple of Macron kits I haven't been keen on, and and probably this is probably only the second one I've not been keen on. Um, obviously, goalkeeper kits are out the equation, but. The only two Macron kits I've not liked are the this season's away kit 
and the uh the the away kit from the relegation season that horrible blue one with the horrible stripes across the chest james has been in the club shop today um went an hour ago and had a look nicest kit we've had for years the pinstripes look mint on the green i i i just think too many pinstripes at the moment you know we had the uh, the home kit last year with the pinstripes we had some silly lines on the bottom of the away kit uh the goalkeeper kit sorry last year and then obviously we've got the pinstripes again this year i think we just need to turn the pinstripes down a little bit but um yeah matt saying that blue kit was one of my favorites are you on about the goalkeeper kit from this season or the relegation kit i assume you're on about the relegation kit that's that was another kit that was a bit like marmite um but to be honest staying on the macron debate i don't think the macron kits have been that bad um training gear a bit hot and cold mostly training kit was just a bit of a write off i think the training kit this year is quite nice to be honest um last year's training kit not much for it the season before that was smart um the season the first season in the championship was that purple season i really like that then there was the two seasons in the last of the premier league years that yeah did not like that horrible blue training gear anyway away from kits we have some friendly news coming out of the club this week oh We've got a couple more questions on the kit, so we'll just momentarily nip back to that. Um, Differences, we've had the the same away template for back-to-back seasons now. It's good to see something different. Away day at West Brom will change your mind on it. (laughs) Probably, probably. When do we play West Brom at the Hawthorns? Sometime in April, isn't it? Something like that. Matt's saying um, Macron needs to be out. We're a big club. We need a big kit supplier. With Macron, I think we do get bespoke designs, apart from the goalkeeper kits, they're pretty much the same across the championship. But in terms of the home and away kit, we do get bespoke designs, which I like. Whereas if we were going to move back to Adidas or uh, Nike or something like that, you know, you'd probably be getting the same, especially away kit, you'd be getting the same as most Premier League teams, most Championship teams, most teams across Europe, they all get pretty much the same template um, kit. I mean, if you take Adidas, for example, how many teams have had that pink kit? The the It's pink kit, black trims with either blue, uh, with black shorts or white shorts. Most teams have had that. I know Leicester have had it, Sheffield United have had it. They're just to name a few. I want to say Man United have had it as well. Um 9th of April, we play West Brom away. Love the away kit from 15-16. Yeah, that's probably one of the one ki- the one kit in recent years that I haven't actually got my hands on, which is crying shame. I need like, both of those 15-16 kits because I was like 12 when I bought them. Um, and obviously, I've grown a lot since then. Um, so, yeah, let's talk friendlies. Players returned to pre-season last week. They're away in Northern Ireland next week. Um, we play Linfield in Belfast next week. And, um, but unfortunately, it is behind closed doors. I want to say that's on the 17th. We haven't actually got a date confirmed on it, but just going by assumption of sort of the, ske- the schedule from last year, I assume we'll be playing them on the Saturday, the 17th of um july the following tuesday we've known this for a couple of weeks we'll be playing crew away um and then a couple more friendlies were announced last week was aston villa at the bet 365 on the 24th of july we're playing wigan away on the 27th of july at the dw and then on saturday the 31st we welcome wolves to the um bet 365 forgot the stadium name we go to scotland this friday for behind closed doors friendly according to stoke loud and proud 
I, I heard whispers that we were playing Hibernian, I want to say. I want to say we were playing Hibernian, um, something like that. But I, I'm not 100% sure if that's like 100% on or whatever. But hopefully they'll be doing they'll be doing a stream for that one because I want to watch it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the preseason schedule. Pretty much it. It pretty much penned in now. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get to the Villa and Wolves game. The crew game will probably be able to get to because it's really cheap on the train and it's you know the train station in crew is literally across the train tracks from the ground wigan not too sure on yet because obviously it's a tuesday night it'll be a bit of a nightmare to get there for a seven o'clock kick however i, I shall try my best to get there um but not 100 percent confirmed yet next we're going to move on to the euro talk um Obviously, it's the final list coming Sunday. Small matter of a, a, a game involved in England, I think, on Wednesday. I'm not too sure. However, we will just quickly cover Wales getting knocked out. Um, Jarlan played against Denmark um, as they were knocked out. Adam Davies didn't even get on the pitch. Danny Ward, to be fair, was has been fantastic for Wales throughout the tournament. But, yeah, Adam Davies didn't managed to get a minute in unfortunately for him um ireland didn't qualify obviously so mclean hasn't played collins hadn't played um but yeah that's just quickly just obviously uh, that game was nearly a week ago so i'll just quickly brush over that however england versus denmark i thought i'd tie this in a little bit into the show uh leave your score predictions for the denmark game in the chat I thought we were excellent against Germany, completely faultless, a little bit slow in the first 20 minutes, 10, 15, 20 minutes or so. However, I think once we got that first goal, we were we were firing on all cylinders. Muller's miss was very lucky. I, I dread to think what would have happened had that gone in. But we got through and we played Ukraine in Rome. And then one night in Rome, we were strong. We had grown and we came away 4-0 victors. Maguire, Kane Brace, Henderson scoring. Um, but yeah, that fantastic game. I thought we were we were fantastic um, throughout the game on, on Saturday night. But yeah, big game against Denmark on Wednesday. They've got some good players. They've got um, some really good attackers. They've got Paulson. Uh, Kasper Dolberg. Then you're looking at the defenders. They've got some. Well, they've got one of them. I think one of the most underrated goalkeepers in English European football in Kasper Schmeichel. They he's been absolutely fantastic for for Denmark and Leicester throughout the back end of last season too. A quick question on the McLean Germany shirt incident. I mean, I saw on TikTok and Twitter and stuff like that that, you know, Scotland fans had um, Ukraine flags in the back garden and Germany flags hanging out the windows. I'm not particularly that bothered. Um, if that's what he wants to do, let him do it. Um, I think McLean will probably be off in the summer, this summer anyway. I think he's burnt his bridges especially after the boxing incident um, during the sec third, second, third lockdown, whenever that was. I think he's burnt his bridges at Stoke, though. Um, so I doubt McLean will feature this season. A couple of score predictions. Will's going 2-0 to England. Tom is going 2-0 to England. Kane and Phillips. Nathan's going 1-0 after extra time. Adrian saying it's coming home. Right, I my prediction was very nearly correct on um, on Saturday. I said two 0 Kane and Maguire um, to score, and then obviously Kane spoils it. But he did get me good fantasy points, which is really good because he was he was captain for me. I had Sterling in there as well. Uh, that reminds me, I need to do my team. Um, but yeah, my score prediction. I'm going to. Oh, I don't know. Oh dear. Oh, no. I, 
I wasn't nervous for it until this morning, and then it sort of hit me and said, oh, we've got a semi-final this week. Um, of course it's coming home, Adrian. Of course it's going to come home. Um, James saying, haven't predicted a game since Scotland. As I said, we'd win 4-0 and we drew. Yeah, that Scotland game was a bit of a bit of a write-off, but I think it was a bit of a blessing in disguise, to be honest. Uh, however, I am going to predict... Oh, I'm going to go 2 0 England. I'm going to go Kane and I'm going to go Sterling. I'm going to go same score line as Germany. I think I think it'll be something along those lines. I reckon. I think the one thing we can't do is score incredibly early like we did against Croatia. Um, I think we scored too early against Croatia, and I think we've got a little bit too ahead of ourselves. So. Yeah, let's say Kane scores in the 37th minute and Sterling scores in the 82nd minute to wrap it up. Heading to the final against the Italians on um, on Sunday. I was about to say next Sunday, but it's this Sunday. Um, against the Italians this Sunday. And we will win... No, I'm going to save my prediction for the final for friday's live show um if nothing's come out of the stoke city world this week i'll, I'll do a final preview if we make it um however i think we we're in for a busy week at clayton wood but that is just about it hopefully you have enjoyed today's live show if you have drop a like down below subscribe if you're new um comment uh, all your thoughts if you are watching this back as a video and um yeah uh hopefully england win on on wednesday hopefully we can get a couple more deals over the line this week and uh yeah hope you guys have enjoyed i'll see you guys in the next one come on stoke and england up the three lines come on the boys <laughs>